What's going on YouTube? Anthony Ardu Reviews here with another neck of Pacific Rim figure for you guys. This time we have the Jaeger Channel Alpha. Here's a quick look at the figure in packaging. Front of the box. We have Jaeger Channel Alpha. Uh, image of the character. Warning. Nice look at the figure in package. Up at the top we have Jaeger and I believe we have the Kaiju Kills to the right. Six. And Pacific Rim at the top pretty much it for the front. Alright, here we have the back side of the packaging that says Pacific Rim. A nice image of the figure right here in the back. Uh, the other characters in this series have already reviewed the Battle Damage Knifehead and the Trespasser. Check those out. I'll be doing the Coyote Tango right after this one. And up in the left hand corner it says Jaeger Mark IV. I'm not sure why it says Mark IV. Um, Eternal Alpha is a Mark I. If you guys know why it says Mark IV, please let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the packaging. Let's get this guy out of the package and have a closer look at him. Alright, so here we have Eternal Alpha outside of packaging. It is a really, really nice figure. Uh, some quick information on the character. Eternal Alpha was piloted by a uh, husband and wife from Russia. It's a Russian Jaeger. I believe it had uh, six Kaiju encounters and six Kaiju kills, not including its, uh, its final battle with Otachi and Leatherback, which led to, unfortunately, his demise. But yeah, this is a really nice nice Jaeger and a really interesting Jaeger very different from the others He's, he looks really bulky and tank like he looks uh sort of old school I really like that about him he has a really nice old school look kind of reminds me of the ones from uh from Real Steel yeah it looks a lot like the characters from Real Steel this one but a really really nice figure the detail in this guy is amazing you see the weathering and stuff they added it just looks fantastic I would love to have a larger maybe a six scale or a 18 inch figure of this guy really nice just giving you guys a quick look of the front of the character all the detailing and the pistons and gears really nice bulky looking figure I believe the pilots, uh, if I can focus, I believe the pilots were uh, inside of here, this orange glass area, be where the pilots were, so I don't think they're in this dome section in the film. But yeah, really nice. It's the front of the figure. And just a look at the side of this dome, you can see it says Chernal Alpha up top. Coming down to the side, there's some writing on the side of these. Uh, I'm not sure if these were his fuel, fuel reserves or... Uh, I didn't see him use them as weapons in the film, so I'm not really sure. Coming down to the arm, it says Eternal Alpha again. These big, bulky hands. He was punching Otachi, Otachi with. Very heavy, coming down to the knees. And these, uh, his feet. Unfortunately, there's no ankle rocker in these guys, so when you set them up at any type of angle, this one's not laying flat because there's no uh there's no way to rotate this to where it could bend so if his knees are angled at all this thing is not sitting flat it's my only complaint with this figure so far but yeah that's the side of the figure. all right having a look at the back side of the character starting with this dome you can see there's some detailing going on in there overall I'm carrying to the back a lot of detailing in there unfortunately he has this weird stance that he's in right outside the box he always looks like he's slanted. This is about as straight as I can get his legs. And there's like a weird a weird angle to him. You pan out a bit, as you can see. Not too bad from the front, but you can really notice from the back a lot. But yeah, this is how the, the figure came out. This weird angle. But the detailing in the back is really nice. As you can see all the mechanics going on back there. Really nice. There's this tiny wiring right here, which could probably be an issue for getting broken. If I can focus. Uh, there we go. This tiny wire right here might be an issue when you're uh, articulating the legs. Be careful with uh, breaking that. Also with the hands, there's a, an issue with that. I'll get to that right now in the articulation. But yeah, that's the back of the figure. All right, so taking a look at his uh, articulation, the head. The dome area has none, it can't rotate, can't rock, nothing. The arms can come up about that far. 
the elbows can bend about that far. There's no upper bicep rotation. It can rotate at the elbows about that much. It can't come in at the wrist any. This uh, the fingers have articulation, which I don't want to break. This time around, I was able to watch someone else's review. But yeah, these are very delicate, so be very careful when rotating, I mean articulating the fingers right here. They can snap. He has the piston looking the piston motion in the the forearm, which he used in the film when he was punching. Really nice. There's a no there's a swivel at the waist and a bit of a crunch. You can go back about that much. Let's see the legs can go out that far not completely splits but not bad the knees have a really nice bend as you can see and again there's no rocker at the angle ankle which you really could use on this guy so he has an awkward stance when you bend his legs at all and you really need to bend his legs to get him in some nice poses but the ankles aren't going to help you so he won't be standing straight so yeah, that's my only issue so far with the figure is the the lack of ankle articulation and the the chance of these uh, fingers breaking. Other than that, I have no issue. I really don't care much for his dome rotating or not. It doesn't really get in the way. But yeah, that's pretty much it for articulation. Alright, so size comparison. Here he is next to his partner in crime, Crimson Typhoon. As you see, they're in pretty good scale with one another. Looking good. And here he is next to the two kaiju of the series, Battle Damage Knifehead and Trespasser. So he's in pretty good scale with these two, even though he didn't fight these guys in the film. They haven't released Otachi, and I forgot to bring uh, Leather back to include. But yeah, you can see the scale is pretty good with these guys. And for a last quick comparison, here he is next to SH Monstars, Comic-Con Explosion, Godzilla. And you can see their scale is pretty nice. Alright, so that concludes my review of the NECA Pacific Rim Turtle Alpha. Uh, if I forgot to mention anything, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer it for you guys. Um, this figure gets a high um, recommendation from me. It's a great figure. If you're collecting the rest of the series, you can't pass this guy up. Really nice. And uh, he had a nice fight scene in the film along with Crimson Typhoon, even though it was short, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, this whole series three is really great. You guys should check him out and pick him up before the price increases. Um, uh, stick around for my review of Coyote Tangle next. And uh, thanks for watching. Please like, rate, and subscribe, and share if you guys like this video at all. Uh, thanks again, guys.